Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we are installing Dockage, Docke. I don't actually know how to pronounce it, but it's a Docker Compose Manager, so let's get into it. So what you're looking at here is the website for Docke. I'm going to call it Docke. I don't know if, know if that's actually how it's pronounced, but oh well. Uh, so again, it might look familiar if you are familiar with Uptime Kuma, and this is just a way to manage and deploy your Docker Compose files. It should be pretty straightforward and easy to navigate. I haven't actually installed this before, but I thought we could all walk through it together. So uh, what I'm thinking, they don't really have a demo or anything. So the main thing is, let's just go through the steps on deploying it. So this is their website. Their website is going to be in the description of this video. And so they've got download or GitHub. I like to go to the GitHub because we are looking for the Docker Compose file because that's how we deploy all of our stuff around here. So all of this will be in the description if you're keen to check it out. But what I'm going to do is just scroll down and we're going to look for the how to install. They've got some basic commands here. So this is where we're going to pretty much go from. So they're saying here there's a few things that we need to do. So let's just have a look. So they're saying here, create directories that store your stacks. Uh, so we need to create a few directories, which is uh, here, and then we download the compose file, and then we deploy it. So let's head to our Linux server to get this all ready to go. So I am connected to my Alzim server here. If you're following along, feel free to follow what I'm doing. So uh, if you're familiar with how I deploy my Docker containers, I normally make a folder for them and everything kind of lives in there. So let's go ahead and make our directory. So let's go docge, if I can spell, and we'll change into there and do an ls and there's nothing in here. So we can see here that it's just asking us to make a couple of directories. So um, we're going to create a stacks directory and a docker uh, directory within the OPT opt. And I believe that stands for optional that directory and it's for like pretty much like non-standard um, files, uh, programs that you're installing. Correct me if I'm, wrong, if I'm wrong there. But so this already exists on your system, but in there we're going to create those two directories. So let's copy that head back to our server and we will just run that, right? So we're gonna make some directories here. So hit enter. And now if we do an ls opt, now enter, we can see that we have those two there. So we have doc a and stacks. Awesome. So let's clear that. Go back to our instructions. And now we need to pull the compose file, right? So we're gonna download the compose file. So if I click here and hit enter, we should have downloaded it, hit ls. We have now that we have that compose file now. So if you've followed any of my other videos, this point should look pretty familiar to you. Uh, but let's jump into the compose file and just get an idea of what's going on. So we can see that this is going to run on port 5001. So just make sure you don't have anything running on that port. If you do, feel free to change it if needed. So let's scroll down. We can see that this is going to connect into the Docker socket, which makes sense. So this is going to grant it access to be able to see the containers that you are running and to be able to interact with it. And this makes sense because it is going to, you know, be our Docker Compose manager in some sense. It's also going to create a data directory in this local directory where we are, hence the dot. And then it's saying here, hey, stacks directory, read it carefully. If you did it wrong, your data could, oh, I just modified that, but don't worry. Uh, I'll just exit out. Uh, read it carefully. If you did it wrong, your data could end up writing into a wrong path. Full path only, left stacks, paths, right stacks, paths. You know, it's just saying, hey, look, don't change things. Um, and if you do, make sure you know what you're doing. And then it's saying that the docker stacks directory equals opt stacks. So those are the two things that we've made and we've confirmed that, yes, it all exists. I'm going to exit out of that, not make any changes, confirm that you no know, changes were made. Cool, so we're just gonna leave it as default. We don't actually need to change anything, okay? Now, if we go back to the instructions, it's pretty much straightforward from this point on. We're just going to stand up uh, the container. So we can do a docker compose up hyphen D and hit enter. Now, let me just kind of take a breather here really quick. So all we've done, okay, we've made a couple of directories, okay? We've downloaded the compose file, and we've just stood it up. That's all we've done, okay? So now we should be able to access our server, the my Alzim server in this case, on port 5001, and we should hit docke. So let's give it a go. So I can access my server on alzim.local, and it was 5001, and I hit enter. There we are. We are. We have our CR uh, docke 
user uh, screen here so we can create our user so we'll call it tech docs we'll give it a very strong password that's not called testing one two three four five and hit create and we are in now straight away what we can see we can see that we can see the containers that I have currently running on the left hand side here so we can see our book stack and again if you're familiar with things like Portainer we can see that since this wasn't created within side doc a we can't actually manage this compose file but that's fine we can still see everything uh, before we create anything let's just have a quick look around we can see a higher level of any containers that we have running if any are stopped or just inactive for whatever reason we can actually put a docker run command in here and it will actually convert it to compose that's interesting so if i do a docker um run um hyphen name for a name and we'll call it nginx and this will just be nginx latest uh we'll also put a port on here let's give this a go and have a look and let's say 8080 convert to compose look at that this will convert if you have see a docker run command and you want it to be composed this will do it for you that's pretty cool eh uh, i don't want to deploy this so let's not worry about that let's go back to the home yes i'll cancel that so straight away there's a cool little docker run to compose converter we've got a console here and this is straight into uh the server i'm assuming uh sorry the container that's running so we have direct console access to that and we also can scan if there's any new stacks in the folder stacks being your compose any compose that you've deployed and settings i'm assuming we've just got user access and whatnot so what have we got here <clears throat> we've got a host name that we can set appearance just language settings security so just changing the username on mine and the about so there's no uh it doesn't look like there's any user r back or anything like this we just got one user here but that is fine so very straightforward okay so let's go ahead and deploy a compose and give it a go and see what happens so stack name so this is my nginx one that i had before so let's give this a go nginx uh, we'll put hyphen test on there why not and we're going to be using the nginx container that is fine and what's cool is that uh if i edit any of this it should just edit up here oh can i also edit it here as well that's cool so wow okay awesome see so anything i change on the right hand side here it changes in the menu that's really cool and i can change uh and you know modify the networks on the right hand side here uh or you can just yeah live edit in the compose i don't want it to run on port 8080 i'll put it in five and i'm assuming i could probably also come in here and edit and change the port here as well so if i change that to five here it changes on the right hand side uh in the compose section as well nice nice and easy add volumes if we want if i want to add a volume i'm not going to worry about that restart policies uh, always is nice so you know if a docker's container or if your server restarts the container will always come up so that's quite nice environment variables if we want them or anything like that cool let's go ahead and deploy this and see what happens <coughs> cool it's been deployed so we've we've got it deployed straight away view of the terminal of what's happening in the container awesome and that should be deployed on port 8085 so let's give that a go and have a look enter there we go we hit it and if i go back we should have a log yes we do and there's that log of the connection to it and now we can see uh, if i come back to the home directory see how it's kind of um like lit up like the rest so the rest are kind of dark active this one's light active so if i click onto it we've got the full management so we can edit the compose if we want so i could change the port if i wanted to uh, we can hit restart we can update it so if i click on update okay so this will just update the the image so if there's a new image you can just click update updates it all for you uh, you don't need to do anything else so you can see here it's doing a bit of an update it looks like it's doing a fresh repull of the image because i should have been using the latest version already so you can see it's just recreated that image for us what else have we got stop and down or we can just stop it and we can also get a bash terminal straight into the nginx container as well 
So that's docke, dockage. I have no idea how it's pronounced. Please let me know. Um, anyway, that is how you can manage Docker Compose files another way. So uh, I've, I've showcased Portainer before. Now Portainer has a lot more um, you know, features in terms of managing more than just a Compose file. So if you're looking for a bit more, make sure to check out something like Portainer. Uh, I have a video on that. I'll link that somewhere. But if you're just looking for something, just deploy simple compose, um, just single user access and stuff like that, Docker seems to be an awesome solution for that as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, thank you so much for all the support lately. It's just been insane. I think I've made like a thousand subscribers just this month, which is just crazy. Thank you so much. Again, uh, if you're looking for any support, uh, make sure to come into our Discord. Members get one-on-one -on -one support with me. That's YouTube members. Uh, I think it's like $2.50 a month or something. Make sure to check that out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great one. Bye-bye.